Hello, I'm Hafiz and I will be your narrator and teaching guide for this video. Before we begin, let's learn the basics of software quality. To begin with, what is software quality? Software quality is defined as a field of study and practice that describe the desirable attributes of software products. Then, what does it do? A quality product does exactly what the user wants. So, if the user wants to do something, if he or she is satisfied with that, then you can consider the software is a quality product. For software product, the fitness of purpose is usually interpreted in terms of satisfaction of requirement. Then, what is the purpose of process quality? The intention is to develop new methods and techniques that can support software development organization in their aim to have a better software process. Here are the objectives of process quality. The objectives are to define and criticize the concepts of process and quality in the context of software development. Evaluate development activities against an accepted standardized life cycle model and Recognize the framework by which the delivery of quality can be made the focus of an organization. So what is the attributes? Attributes and usage model are fairly typical frameworks for translating a strategic definition into a tactical measurement of quality. Therefore, the attributes and usage components you select are a reflection of the organization goals and mission. Now let us see some of the attributes that represent areas of concern that have potential for application impact. So we have function stability, performance efficiency, compatibility, usability, reliability, security, maintainability, and portability. So remember, any attribute that present in any software product present on that software product. On that account, here are a few examples. One would expect an airline definition and model of quality to prominently future safety. On the other hand, a financial institution would tend to highlight data and physical security. Therefore, leveraging the ISO quality in use model as an example to develop a measurement palette. So, are you catching up? Let's move on. Here is one of the few research articles that presents process quality, which entitled The Defect Analysis and Prevention for Software Process Quality Improvement, which is written by Sakti Kumarash and R. Baskaran. So, before we proceed, let us know about the meaning of software defect. Software defect can be defined as imperfection in software development process that will cause software to fail to meet the desired expectations. Thus, in software development, a lot of defects will emerge during development process. Mainly, the purpose of this article is to identify those defects in the beginning of the life cycle and prevent them from recurring so that the defect may not surface again. The scope of this article is to provide a comprehensive view on the defect prevention technique that can be followed in the software development. The early studies will focus on defect prevention and decide upon the team's sense of testing resource required in order to complete the project on time. Hence, a lot of effort will utilize in the debugging and eliminating the defects. Therefore, with the advent of SDLC process, many companies formulate their own defect prevention mechanism and many studies were conducted towards the defect prediction and prevention. So, does it necessary? In most software organizations, the project team focus on defect detection and rework. 
Hence, it is therefore advisable to make measures that prevent the defect from being introduced in the product right for the early stage of the project. So, let's move on to the process improvement workflow. There are four phases in which they go through. The knowledge of defect injecting methods and process enable the defect prevention. Once this knowledge is practiced, the quality is improved. The first phase is defect identification, in which defects are found by pre planned activities specifically intended to uncover defects. The second phase is defect classification. Orthogonal defect classification is the most prevailing techniques for identifying defects, wherein defects are grouped into types rather than considered independently. ODC classify defects at two different points in time. For small and medium projects, in order to save time and effort, the defects can be classified up to the first level of ODC, while large projects need the defects to be classified deeply in order to get analyzed and understand the defects. The third phase is defect analysis. The defect analysis generally seeks to classify defect into categories and identify possible causes in order to direct process improvement effort. The goal of RCA is to identify the root cause of defects and initiate action so the source of defects is eliminated. The fourth phase is defect prevention. The purpose of defect prevention is to identify the cause of defects and prevent them from reoccurring. The fifth and final phase is process improvement. We suggest preventive actions are implemented by rewriting the existing quality manuals and tweaking the SDLC process and came up with an improved SDLC process and documents. Therefore, the next set of projects follow the revised quality process thereby effectively all the preventive actions are followed meticulously. Now that's over, let's move on to the selected projects. So, these are the selected projects that are chosen to test out this thesis. To begin with, the defect density is calculated to track the impact of defect reduction and to judge the quality improvement on the project that has implemented defect preventive action with the project that did not follow any preventive action. So based on the table, the project size can be measured either in terms of kilolines of code produced or in terms of function point. For the projects that are taken for the study, the project size is measured in terms of kilolines of code. Thus, comparison is then made between the kilolines of code and the number of defects produced by the project. From the graph, it is found that 70 to 80 percentage of defects were classified as coding defects. After defects are documented, the next step is to review and analyze them using root cause analysis techniques. Root cause analysis is the process of finding the process which cause the defects and find out ways of eliminating the effects of that by providing the remedial measures. Now, let's go through how they implement the preventive action. A standard brainstorming procedure was followed to do the root cause analysis. First, all the possible causes were identified from the cause and effect diagram and debate among the team and all suggestions were listed. Then the ones that were identified as the main reason for the cause were separated out. For this cause, possible preventive action were discussed and finally agreed among the project team members. Now, let's move on to the implementation defect preventive action. To see the effectiveness of using DP action, it was implemented in the next set of 5 similar projects and the process improvement was observed in terms of average defect density. The graph represented the distribution of defect density for 5 similar projects before and after implementing the defect prevention. So what do we learn from all this? Implementation of defect preventive action not only helps to give a quality project, but it is also a valuable investment. In short. The study confirmed defect prevention practice enhanced the ability of software developers to learn from those errors and more importantly, learn from the mistake of others. So, we have reached to the end of this video. I hope you learned something and thanks for watching.